Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, episode two of our Plasticity Beginner Solid Modeling series, we're going to be looking at edges and offsets. Now, if you missed the first episode, we talked about starting shapes. These are primitives and curve-driven shapes. It's not required that you have seen that episode, but if you are just getting started in plasticity and you need a more beginner-friendly interface guide, make sure that you check out our video on the Quick Start Guide for version 1.4. It's going to give you all the information about the UI, about where shortcuts are, and how to find tools. That is going to be the basic starting point. We're going to assume that you have played around with plasticity a little bit, but of course we'll call out all of the shortcut keys that we use. Now remember that we are an affiliate, and if you are buying plasticity, you can use the code LEAD10 at checkout. That is going to give you 10% off either the indie or studio versions. Now, with all that said, we're going to get started from scratch in every episode of the series. So don't worry about needing a starting file. We're going to begin with the starting cube, select it, and delete it. Now, in a lot of cases, we can just start with a cube, but it's important that we get comfortable with these tools. So we're going to begin by hitting 7 on our numpad, going to our top view. And we're going to begin by using a corner rectangle. Start at the origin, begin dragging this out, and hit the C key to create a center rectangle. Now, hitting C, you can toggle back and forth, but I always find it extremely helpful and important to base my designs at the origin. It makes it much easier to work with symmetry whenever possible. Now, we don't have to worry about any specific dimensions, but if you want to, you can tab over to your dimensions and manually enter them. But for me, I'm just going to left-click until it takes up about this much of my screen. Right-click to accept it. Now, one important tool as we begin learning plasticity is learning how to join and unjoin curves. Now remember, F on the keyboard is going to be our find for all commands. You can simply search through all of these, or we can start to type in words if we know roughly what we're looking for. So with join, this is going to allow us to join multiple sheets or surfaces together, and it's also going to allow us to join multiple curves together. However, we have a single grouping of four edges right now, and we want to break these up into four individual curves. To do that, we're going to use unjoin, which is Alt and J. When we unjoin, you can see on the left-hand side, we now have four individual curves. The reason that we do this is because we wanted to start with that corner rectangle because it was very easy for us to get it centered about the origin. Now I want to select and delete that corner, and I want to fill this back in with a tangent arc. Now the tangent arc is going to be found underneath the circle tool, so hold down your left mouse button and navigate until you find the tangent arc. It's all the way at the bottom, left click, and then we're going to place it from here to here. Now we've got a closed profile. While it's not required that we join these back together, it is good practice to select them and hit J on the keyboard. That's going to put it back as a single curve, which means that we don't have to worry about going in and selecting each one individually. One other benefit to this is now if we select this and hit B on the keyboard, that's going to allow us to either bevel or fill it all the corners at the same time. Now, if the curves are not joined, it's not going to let you do that. Another quick tip, which we are not going to use for this example, is rebuilding or subdividing curves. Now, if I select rebuild, I can use refit or a number of points, and I can increase or decrease this to make a sort of a smooth splined version. That's a quick way to take a very simple shape and turn it into a smooth shape, but we're going to undo that. Now, some of the times when I might do that is if I want to create a basic shape out of lines, and then I want to rebuild that using the number of points, and I want to smooth it out as a starting shape. Now, it's not a perfect solution, but it can get you pretty close, allowing you to move and rebuild a, a pretty interesting starting shape by just using a couple lines. We're going to go ahead and delete that because we don't need it, but just a quick, a quick uh, couple of tips there for you. Now that we've got this profile, we're going to select it and we're going to pull it up into 3D. Right click, and then we're going to hide our curve. The curve is not joined or attached to the solid in any way, but just in case we make too many changes and we want to go back and replicate it easily, it's nice to keep that curve around until we're sure we don't need it anymore. We can hide it, we can put it in a subgroup at some point later on, but for right now, just hiding it is the best way. Now that we've got a solid, there are a couple of tools that we want to talk about. 
Now, in some cases, for example, selecting this top face, we can pull this up and we can change the size of our object. If we select this front face and begin pulling it out, nothing happens. Now, part of the reason for that is because of tangency as it rolls around the rest of the edges of the part. Now, if I select all the way around this part, and I just work my way around, grabbing all these faces, now it will let me offset this and begin to increase or decrease its size. But because of that tangency across that edge, it doesn't allow it to happen. So you may find yourself in situations like this where you've started to add a bunch of fillets and round corners off, and now you're not able to offset faces like you would expect. When that happens, one thing that we can do is we can select our object and we can use that Alt and J which will turn that solid into a, a sort of an unjoined grouping of individual surfaces. That will allow us to work specifically on individual faces. We can be, begin pulling them out, putting them where we want to. For our example, we're gonna control Z until we get back to a solid, but that's just one method that we can continue to work on the shape with. Another method is to select faces and use the O key on the keyboard, which is offset. Now, when we offset, one thing that happens is the location of your cursor is kind of important. You'll notice that there's this little sort of dotted line that happens. And as we begin to drag away, sometimes you'll note that nothing happens. You may just need to move the cursor around until you're comfortable with the direction of travel. But essentially what we're doing is we're offsetting inward. And what we're gonna do is manually enter a value. So I'm gonna hit I'm gonna come over to this and just start to type in 0.2. Now, even though that dimension box is not able to be tabbed to, just manually entering 0.2 is a great way for us to get that, and we're gonna hit it twice. I'm gonna do this again on the side, hit O to offset, and again hit 0.2 and just hit Enter twice. Once you're comfortable with those selections, it can be very quick and easy for you to just get comfortable hitting the numbers and hitting Enter twice, and the process is quick. We're gonna select these faces both at the same time. And now I'm able to pull them in. Once again, we can enter values. If we hit tab, what's gonna happen is you can see that it's gonna move between these boxes for grow. But we can also click over here and we can enter a value of minus point, let's say 05, right click to accept. And you can see that we inset both of those. Now, again, hitting that point two value is important because now we know that these are aligned. Now, another thing that we can do when we select a face, if we're having trouble offsetting, so let's go ahead and go over here. Instead of unjoining the entire solid and turning it into surfaces, we can use duplicate, which is shift and D, and that's gonna allow us to make a copy of that face. So if there are things that you wanna do, for example, make a bunch of changes to that face, you can copy it, make those manipulations. For example, maybe I want to create an offset of this, Maybe I want to pull that offset section back. And you can see I'm still working on a surface here. And then maybe I want to take this entire thing and thicken it. So F to find, thicken, and begin pulling this out as a solid. Then you can move that back. And we can subtract it from this body. So Q on the keyboard, select this, and then we can remove that feature. So while it's not a perfect solution, we do have some other options like, such as unjoining or duplicating a face. Now we've got this sort of shape where one side is pretty nice and well-defined and this other side has sort of haphazardly pulled something in and made a subtraction. You'll also notice that we've got two solids listed here. We've got this extra solid piece because it was able to completely cut away a section of it. What we wanna do now is make use of symmetry. So I'm gonna hit seven on my numpad. I'm gonna use this line here. And then I'm going to cut this with a curve. So C on the keyboard, or once again, you can hit F and search for cut. You can see it's C here. Select our solid. And now this right side can just be deleted because now we've got everything that we need on the left side. And once we're done adding all of our detail, we can simply mirror it over. So if we wanna make additional offsets of this face, for example, and we wanna begin staggering them, and then go ahead and hit O again to offset and stagger that inward. Once we're done with this, we simply need to select mirror. We wanna go across the Y direction. 
We also have the option, you can see here, Q is union or merge. We hit Q and it'll automatically combine it back to that solid. Again, a great reason why we should try to work about the origin whenever possible. Even though our object is not centered in the X direction, it is centered in the Y direction, meaning that we can make use of that as a mirror plane. Now, there are two more tools that are kind of come into play with edges and offsets that I want to talk about here. And that's going to be the use of imprint a curve, which is shift and I and isoparam. So for this, I'm going to go to a side view here. So again, number one on the numpad. And I'm going to begin with just the line tool. I'm going to come inward, I'm going to make a sort of a taper here, down, taper and come back out, right click. B on the keyboard so I can add a fillet to all these corners. And it, you can see that that ended up adding a chamfer. So we'll do control Z, we'll hit B again and pull it the opposite direction to make sure they are rounded. And now what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking this curve and using imprint to cut the face of our solid. So F on the keyboard, I'm gonna to start to type in imprint. You can see the shortcut here is shift I. When you look through this list, you might see imprint body body, curve body. These all fall underneath this imprint tool. When we select the imprint tool with that curve, I just need to select a solid, right click, and you can see now it's broken that face up. Now this is very handy because what we can do is we can select this face, we can offset it again. So very common way that we might manipulate geometry. And now you can see that we've created that detail. What essentially is happening is we're extruding this surface out, so E on the keyboard, and then it is using that in its intersection with whatever face or solid body we had selected to create that face division. It doesn't separate it as a multiple solid, but what it's doing here is it's simply just dividing that face. Now we can go back and we can use edges of that face, for example, this inside edge, and we can begin adding a chamfer, right click, and on the outside edge, let's go ahead and grab this edge here and add another chamfer and very quickly add some pretty unique details. Some other things that we want to understand are going to be the isoparam tool. And there are plenty of other ways that we can begin breaking up surfaces and faces of solids. But the isoparam tool is one of the harder ones to remember. Now, if you're familiar with Blender, and you use Blender quite a bit, then you will know the Control R shortcut. Now, Control R in plasticity is going to allow us to divide faces up. We can use Shift on the keyboard and the mouse wheel to create multiple divisions. And then we can find a snap point, for example, the mid here, left click. And what we've done is we've broken up these faces to the point where now we can pull them out and we can make those unique details. Because there was a fillet there, plasticity automatically extends and carries that curvature for us, which makes it really nice for us to build out this geometry. I'm going to select that edge, hold down control, work my way through, make some additional selections, right click, and again, very quick and easy for us to make that geometry. Now, I know I've probably said quick and easy 50 times already in these two episodes, but I can't stress enough once you get comfortable with these tools, how fast and efficient you can be at making this geometry. Right now, I'm sure it seems like a lot remembering all the shortcut keys. Just keep in mind the F key is your friend. If you don't remember what a command is called, you can take a little time and just scroll through this entire menu. Most of the time, you'll get pretty close. For example, cut, join, imprint. Those are pretty common terms that you would have associated with what they do. One of the main ones that sticks out is the isoparam tool. Remembering what that is, is probably going to be near impossible if you haven't used it in Blender or some other modeling software. So just take your time and scroll through this list. We will also be providing the shortcuts on the screen, of course, for everything we do. And there is an unofficial plasticity page where there is a list of shortcuts. I'll make sure that I do include that link in the description of this video and other videos. But playing around and figuring out which keys you use all the time is something that is kind of important. So that's going to be the end of our edges and offsets video. The tools that we covered today are going to be things like offset, duplicating a face, using imprint, cutting with a curve, and isoparam. 
most of those tools are going to get used over and over again on pretty much every model that you use because they are very efficient uses of the tools. They allow you to break up geometry quickly and then you can make it fairly complex without doing too much extra work. If you have any questions on what you saw here, please leave a comment. As always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.